Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slippery People. We're recording here at Wave Dot Studios, our little home away from home. Super excited to have a very prolific artist with me today. Uh, talent, music, <laughs> lover of puppies, both human and feline. Is it feline for dogs as well? Canine. 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 I'm sorry, I'm a cat lady. But welcome to Slippery People. I'm Diana Velasquez, and my fabulous guest today is Anna Berros. Hello, Liliana. Ooh. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you made it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's great being here. I, uh, I love being in Lichtenberg. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> I did read the email. I was like, really? Come on. And so I was writing now. There's actually an address, the same address in Neukölln, and many people just go there because they don't bother to look at the video that we send out with the email, email the Google the Google drop pin that we send out with the email, or the zip code. Yeah, zip code's important in Berlin. And yes, it is. How yeah. often has that happened to you? Where you where you say an address and then you end up in a totally different place? Actually, only once, and it was on Christmas Day. That's and a was, bad day for that. Was a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad day for that. I was going to my best friend's house, and I had no idea there was an exact street, uh, like in this other direction. But it, no, it was fine. Because I live on a street that has the same name as a street in Friedrichshain. Okay. And uh, I've been in Uber yeah. cars. I'm dying. I'm like, this is not where I live. And they're like, that's what it says in the thing. I'm like, <laughs> the thing. <laughs> I know where I live. <laughs> yeah, I think my 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 home address is like very specific, and there's only one. Yeah, of I'm them. like, I put in the zip code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Berlin, huh? Berlin. Berlin. Or when street names change from one corner to the next to the next, and nobody tells you. Yeah, I find yeah, I find I found writing here was actually like I always get very lost in Friedrichshain to Lichtenberg. There's like all of these. I don't it know, could be it's close. It's very confusing, but it has a weird way of getting to it. Yeah, and train tracks. I'm just sick of Google Maps not telling the street names. New Google Maps will put you in a dead end all the You're time. Like, oh, here's my. Or it'll be like, just walk through the cemetery. Yes, it's one a.m. That's fine. It's like, what are you? Doing? I find cemeteries much safer than parks, though. I'll walk through a cemetery at one a.m., not a park. Mm. I won't walk through either. Anymore, yeah. anymore. I've just what had, happened? Mm, I had an experience recently. Um, it was riding my bike. So I always think that riding my bike is what keeps me safe, right? Mm. <laughs> and, uh, Do you and wear yeah, a helmet? Not anymore. Ooh. I actually, I, my, okay, so my helmet got vandalized. So then vandalized. I was like, vandalized. Did someone pee in it? Maybe. How vandalized? Like, <laughs> Like I hope no, but they they took out the the padding <laughs> inside. Oh, that's horrible. It's, it's 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 unnecessary, right? And so then I was like, you know what? I, I they I'll buy took a new out helmet. the padding. They took out the padding, so it was just like that's somebody who don't like you. I think it was uh, my bike was locked up for like a month in December with a helmet on yeah, it. Yeah, I keep the helmet there, so it's oh, there. that's your problem. It's my okay, fault. That's it's your totally fault. my okay. fault. But um, <laughs> but and then I started riding without a helmet to like like got around to buying a new one, and it's. It's exactly like it's, it's it's like motorcycles. It's like condoms. Once you stop using them, it's really hard to put them back mm, on. Like so it's, it's vasectomies for everyone. Clink 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 clink. clink, clink. He's got and it. get tested. <laughs> get tested. There's a pill for everything. Clink 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 clink. clink, clink, clink. <laughs> but uh, but but really though, like it's a it's an obvious stare, like um, comparison to make. But just feeling the freedom, like the hair, the wind in your hair when you're riding without a helmet, and like the amount of sweat. And I ride a lot, right? So it's like you ride everywhere at every hour. This bitch is crazy. I just like like I, I'm a, no it, good for you. I, I admire it. I'm right? saying it like that, but it's I just, do admire it. It's better for my mental health. Public Which transport. She needs a lot of help on. What was that? <laughs> And you can relate, okay? Yeah, of course. I, I just won't. I just won't catch Ubers or Bolts or whatever or everywhere. It's better for my mental health. It's exactly. like I'm on an Uber. Mm, no, no. Yeah. But I like the exercise as well, and yeah. just the, it clears my mind. So I do feel better when I've had a bike ride after a right? night of something. Of and anything. then I get home. I, I'm a bit. I'm a bit awake though, instead of yeah, being able to fall asleep. Definitely. But I feel like whatever few drinks I've had have gotten out of my system. Exactly. Whatever thoughts I had from You've like processed them. Yeah. Exactly. I'm doing a bad set or a good set or whatever. Exactly. Meeting someone I don't like, which is so often. So often. Daily. <laughs> hourly. No, everyone here is lovely. <laughs> but, um, but no, like I was riding home and I have to ride through these parklands and I've always thought it's safe because it's like a bike path as opposed to a road. But they're not lit. They are not lit. This is all designed by men. Uh, yes. For sure. Yes. 
And there's like, <laughs> and the residents, unfortunately, just like statistically speaking, probably yes. And um, and the residents in that area they don't take into consideration the safety of a woman at night at all. But but also it's just like isolated. These parklands are isolated. So even if there were lights, it would still be that anyone to hear me scream would be very far away. And I only had this thought the first time when this happened, which was only like two months ago. I was riding and um, I go into the parklands. And as I go into the parklands, this guy rides past me. I just randomly look back and he's stopped and he's looking at me. And I'm like, it's random that I even looked back. Mm. And then I ride through and it comes to this intersection and then I check the road and he's behind me. So he's looped back around and followed me. Ugh, disgusting. And then at this point I was like, okay, I could, you know, go one way or the other. And I was like, let's go to the, you know, the direction that let's takes me cycle. straight home. Take the bike. Ah! <laughs> but I was like, but, but he didn't have bike lights on. And the next part of the road was super, super isolated. And I just, I rode the fastest I've ever rode. Even if I turned around to look, I probably wouldn't be able to see because he didn't have bike lights. Oh, it's so horrible. And it was, yeah, I got home and my heart was racing more than like any drugs could make it race. And I just was like, it was, I was terrified. So yeah. I don't ride through parklands by myself at night anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's preventive maintenance in the end. Yeah. There is still a lot of things going on. And Berlin is much safer than other places, but I don't know. Even when people are like, they're like, hey, let's go buy weed in the park at 2 a.m. I'm like, no. No. That's a that's an what? absolute thing. <laughs> I like how like, even when people are like, it's called the weed. <laughs> I'm like, no. Like, no. <laughs> no, no, no. You go by yourself. Uh-uh. But that's it. I will walk around at night by myself a lot. But, yeah. Um, the other, the other night, it got to the point where I was walking through Friedrichshain, and it, I just every interaction I every every man or group of men I passed, it was like I'm not being paranoid. They do something every time they I pass them. They make a comment. They look at each other. They stare at me. They make you some, don't stare back like a crazy. Yeah, well, I'm just walking. I'm just minding yeah. my own business, yeah. and it's like I'm not. I'm not making this up in my head. It's like this is happening. I'm gonna catch an Uber. God damn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I tell. I, I find it hilarious all the time. I'm like, have somebody. I don't know. Just save money for the Uber home late at night, mm. mm-hmm. especially when you're performing and you're on stage. And you know, it sucks that that's part of the things that I have to invoice for. Yeah. When you ask why I have a minimum rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's know, a good point. Yeah, it's just, we still need to talk about female, like women's safety. safety. And I'm not sure how much it's getting talked about in, in no, Germany. No, not enough. No, I don't think it is. No, I don't no. think so either. Like in Australia, a, 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 this is getting very dark. But a, Hey, welcome to Slippery People. Yeah, okay, good. And also just like, I'm usually very dark, I guess. Um, yeah, there I hate was, the word dark. Okay. Um, like when morbid. it comes to like, yeah, morbid's morbid. much better. You yeah. are. No, I'm very <laughs> I'm more like a pale morbid <laughs> than a dark morbid. Yeah, I'm a pale, very white, <laughs> pale, pale, pale. Um, and so there was a stand-up comedian <laughs> we in Berlin. Start a new a new scene with yeah. pale comedy. Pale comedy. That's not bad. <laughs> well, it's kind of dominates already in <laughs> Europe, huh? And in Australia, and probably in the UK. But um, yeah, there was this stand-up comedian in Melbourne who was walking home, and she got uh, raped and murdered. Is yeah. this the one that was the sex worker that died recently? No, 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 she wasn't. She was just a, she was like quite a fresh face in stand-up comedy scene, in the stand-up comedy scene in 2019 in, in Melbourne. And so when I was there for the Melbourne, they have a, they have a, um, a fund, a program. You don't remember her name? Uh, no, I don't. I didn't know her. But rest in peace. Yeah, rest <laughs> in peace. And, but there's really good initiatives that have come out of it. Um, you know, at least there's something, but like for the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, um, you can apply and they will cover your taxis. Yeah. Before 3 a.m. It's a. necessary. Yeah. It's necessary. Yeah. That's so. what it is. So let me ask you one of the three questions that we ask every guest here. First of all, how, how did you find out about Sunday Slips? How was your comedy journey? Oh, Slips. Okay. <laughs> so Slips was, I think, the second show I ever did. Really? Yeah. So yeah. I remember you working at the coffee shop quite a bit, really close by. And I'm yes. like, come on, come on down. Yes, because we met each other before yeah. I started comedy. And yeah. Uh, and how did we meet? Um, you, uh, like I was just working at this cafe. You came, we talked. You said you were Colombian. And I was like, I married, oh, a, I Colombian. married a Colombian. I was like, poor you, you <laughs> unfortunate soul. <laughs> how? No wonder you're dark. <laughs> morbid and uh and working at a cafe and smoking weed and figuring out your life yeah I was very lost um and uh and we talked because you were coming in a bit regularly and yeah. you were like oh, I'm going to this um yeah they had those like bar. Vietnamese coffees that I like so much with the 
dulce de leche. The condensed, sweet and condensed mm. milk. Yeah, it was um, it was a Vietnamese coffee roastery, mm -hmm. and I was the token white girl. Yeah, that place has had so many flip overs. Like that corner must be. I feel like there's a lot of places in Berlin that just like it's hard to keep a business running in yeah. hospitality here, and that. Yeah, well, I mean, it's place. hard to be hospitable. <laughs> <laughs> It really is. But yeah, the hospitality industry here is tough yeah. uh, because of expectations and industry standards. But um, Which are low. Which are extremely low. On, but like expectations are high on the customer front for what they're getting and how much they want to pay. Well, of customer front of people who don't, who are traveling through. Yeah, yes, yes. But locals are like, yeah, whatever. I'll wait 45 minutes for my coffee. And yeah, I, I really appreciate it if you don't talk to me or acknowledge my existence. Oh, my God. Can I come in? Oh my God. Point at something. We need to talk about Germans. I love Germans, but like since I was in Edinburgh and then, and also in Australia for the festivals this year, it's like coming back. I'm just like, oh, can we just start with friendliness as opposed to anger or like mild irritation? I feel mm. ho like hospitality is tough. I, I, I don't mind neutrality. Mm. Like if they're mm -hmm. neutral and mm -hmm. it's just like a, a, you know, that's fine. Uh, I can understand that. But the yeah. aggressiveness of, yeah. of certain interactions. Um, and they're not just Germans. I, f I find that in many other cultures as oh, well. Oh, really? I, I, I'm really, yeah, that's, uh, I felt like that was happening. I was like, is that a hair? I'll just ignore it. It's a big hair. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. I don't find it in that many other cultures though. Like not in Anglo cultures. Mm. Mm, okay. Mm. But there's always, a, there's always, um, exceptions. But anyway, what were we talking about? Media, so Sunday slips. So you, you were, I was like, what are you, what are you doing now? You, you invited me. You were like, Slow down. come and check it out. <laughs> Take a breath. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what happened. I was like, what happened? You invited me to Sunday slips yeah. and I was working there and I was like, okay. And, um, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to come. But, uh, <laughs> but then I, um, but then, yeah, I did my very first mic and then it was slips. That was the next one I did. And, uh, it was and now you haven't location. stopped. Now you run how many shows? You did Edinburgh. How was your Edinburgh run? Oh, it was the best. Really? It was Were the you best. there for the whole month or two weeks? Just two weeks. Two weeks. Have you done a good it? amount? Yeah, twice. Twice. Yeah. Did you do full runs? No. Two weeks or it's a week? Torture. I, I'm going back for the full month. You next love year. torture. I love stand up comedy and just doing it. And yeah, doing me too. It and doing I love it. stand up comedy and doing it and doing it. Yeah, that's not that too doesn't much mean now. I want to be surrounded by thousands of people. Comp <laughs> like, that are almost like, all drunk. Paradise. It's like mm. it's like full rooms of people that want to watch stand up comedy that know yeah, that yeah, stand up comedy. Yeah, I love that. Comedy. And then it's just show after show after show and being able to do. It's like you're a junkie. Yeah, a little bit, maybe. <laughs> but it's like the amount of improvement you can oh, make. Oh, yes, of course. And then, um, and it's also a different level because in every show, you don't know who's going to be in the room, mm -hmm. whether it's reviewers or, um, you know, who's Families watching. Families or. Or producers. And so the opportunities. So nothing is low stakes. So it's this high stake. Yeah. Every show. That's the whole reason for it. Yeah. And it's just, that's so exciting. Which just, show did you take? Um, I took my solo cream pie curious. Nice. And um, I had the 1 a.m. slot at the city cafe. Woo. Yeah, that I was like, oh, that's, that, that'll be fine. And, um, I did not prepare for how mentally challenged and physically challenging that would be, like yeah. 1 a.m. Absolutely. For your solo show. Yeah, that's a lot to be, maintain your energy. Like to pace yourself in the daytime, absorb all these other things. Yeah, to keep your prime energy for your work yeah. at one a.m. and then and then the frustrating thing was just that at that time slot, there's no other shows I could do afterwards. So I had to reduce how many other shows I could do because I just I couldn't be working working or doing spots before really like four p.m. So because I'd need to sleep until like midday minimum. True. Yeah. So, but but it was it was. Amazing, like the number of comedians I got to like get closer with. Yeah, and you and, run into people from other countries and yeah. meet new people and make great contacts. Yeah. And, no, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm so I'm so happy for you. That's wonderful. It was it was the best two weeks of my life. 
of her life. Of my life. That's upset a few wow. people that I've told that to, but yeah. Yeah. Who did you say that to? Uh, like the guy M- that I'm... Multiple exes. Multiple exes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't speak to them. But uh, no, the guy that I, like, I'm currently seeing is like, really? The best two weeks? they only text. That's how young your exes are. <laughs> <laughs> There's older exes. There's, really? Yeah. My, my most recent, like, person that called me their girlfriend is 40. What? When what? did this happen? How did I miss this? You didn't like him, and I still. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like him anymore. And now, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to go too much no, into no, it. No, 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 no. All good. Yeah, I need him to tell him not to come to my venues or my productions. Uh huh. Mm. Well, that's how it is. Mm-hmm. That's how it is. That's how it is. But no, I've dated forty-year-olds and people my age. But yeah, they are usually quite. Pretty young. soon, you'll be in your forties. I know. Only four years. Only four Three and a half years. Three years and two months. <laughs> I'm excited about 40s, but I, I am freezing my eggs um, this year. Oh, yeah. She wants to be a mommy. I want to be a mom. I want to be a mom. Why? Because uh, I want to. Great. That's yeah. the only answer I need. Right. <laughs> right. Right. I want to do it. I want to do it. Yeah. You're kind of obsessed with having a baby. Um. Yeah, you've been talking about it for like... I've been talking about it for five you've years. You've been talking mm-hmm. about it and selecting men... Purposely for procreation. Yes. And yes. none of them are suitable. None of them. None of them. Uh, none of them. But I'm getting better. Like, I'm getting better at, 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 at picking them. I really, I, I am getting better. So you're freezing your eggs. Yes. I got my fertility tested and I have the fertility of a 20 to 25 year old. Wow. I know. I don't want to be bragging, but like, I've done everything I can to, to destroy that. <laughs> And it and it's I feel like a I feel like a wicked witch that's like ha 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 I kept the uterus safe like I don't know I, well, not just the uterus but like the egg like I yeah twenty to twenty five like not like a twenty five to thirty year old twenty to twenty five year old like I've got I'm in peak fertility that's Isn't insane, that insane yes the 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 that's the, great I mean that's DNA that's who you are the guy I was just like she used the term like super good fertility <laughs> like, she's like super good yeah no, this Frau. <laughs> This is super good. She's like, you can wait. I shouldn't recommend that, but you could wait. And I was like, I will freeze. Yeah, but what eggs. about the rest of my body? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like here as well, but and just general fitness. But no, I I want to freeze them, and then I, at forty, I will. I like another four years of doing comedy. At forty would be when I when. And I then she's the gonna baby. come out with a special pregnant on stage. Hopefully, <laughs> wouldn't that be would that be original? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like uh, yeah, give myself four more years to like really establish myself in comedy, get a little bit more secure financially, and then. Would you carry the baby yourself, or would you have a volunteer womb? I would want to go through pregnancy. Mm. And get those, get my my tits sagging, you know, um, rip this apart if I can. But it'll probably be a C-section. Because most are planned it all. It just generally, like the statistics are in Australia, for example. I think it's like seventy percent of births. But that's because that's what they offer them. That's it's also what, what they, they push. It's what they push. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. it's not like. But even in Germany as well. All yeah, my but friends, that's the medical industry around the world. That's what they push they on do. you because they want them. They want. What do they want? What do they get out of it? Money. Do they? Machines. Um, regulation, all of these things that have to go through the hospitals and our grandfathered in as, as machines. If I can save my vagina, I'll do it. I don't know though. if you're saving it. It's pretty flexible, that thing. If you've been fisted and you're fine, like, please. <laughs> the things that you've done sexually, I think you can have a baby. I think I could have a baby. <laughs> Maybe I think save I could... your stomach. Also, it's a really horrible... The C-sections are just... Yeah. No, I, I would prefer dangerous. a natural birth. I don't want a C-section, but I would, you know, at usually geriatric pregnancies, they want they, they suggest that because it's safer. Oh, I thought you had the fertility of a 20-year-old. Fertility of a 20-year-old. In a geriatric body. Body of a, of a, of a senior <laughs> citizen. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so well, on this note, being that we're already speaking <laughs> about the future, <laughs> what are your future plans as an artist, mm. as a mom to be? Oh God, uh, yeah. Look, yeah, mom to be. I want to be a mom. I do want it. Um, would you adopt? Uh, it's really hard, but I, I would, I would, I would. But I want to go. Like, but I, I want to have my own baby. But I want to f- get pregnant. I want to experience that in my body. Mm. Um, but, I never wanted that experience. Yeah, I want the full, like, all the pains, all the hormones, all of, like, what that does Hormones to are me. already happening, I mean. But, like, when you get pregnant, apparently your hormones double every day. Mm. Like, like. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it just is, like, you, you're experiencing this whole different uh, level of emotion and 
yeah, physical, like, and your body changes and your organs move yeah. and that's kind of interesting. So, yeah, I'd like to experience that. And so adoption, it gets, it's like at 40, they, they really limit your ability to do- adopt actually. They don't like to, um, they don't like to adopt to people that want to. die to. soon? Yeah, or that want to. Like no one in their 20s is like, I want to adopt. <laughs> oh, it's a, yeah, I mean, it's rare. It's crazy. But they, they, in certain countries, you're not even allowed to adopt after 40. Mm. 45 so uh yeah i'm more I'm sure interested there are in ways around that <laughs> probably probably i identify as a 30 year old um i don't i don't know what the ways around are but apparently they make it hard but in the future um so with the motherhood thing if i live the next four years <laughs> uh that's dark uh morbid um but i want with comedy as an artist I want to keep working um, full-time comedy, giving it everything I can. You are already giving it everything you can. I mean, you're full-time yeah. producing how many shows a week? So weekly, uh, just moved down to three shows a week. Which are? Uh, which are after-party comedy. After-party. Where is that? That's at The Wall. Sweet. Uh, every Sunday uh, from 6 till 7 p.m. I love it. Yes. Yes. So uh, it, you can do both after-party comedy and Sunday slips. I know. You've done that. You've done exactly. that. I don't. I do it regularly. <laughs> but I love that. Yeah. I, I love it. I, I love the show up to go up format of um, after party comedy and Sunday slips. I like that. Yeah. You know, sometimes you do have to, it requires a little bit more um, as you would very well know. Sometimes you need to manage uh, people a little bit differently because mm. you're not controlling the lineup, but mm. then some people create problems. So it, or sometimes it, somebody special shows up and they really should have a spot because that's part of learning. And also that, you know, yeah. Although I don't really do that. I don't give anyone preference. Like it's it's really like you have to show. So for after party comedy, you have to show so up. So Mark Normandy's in town right now, right? Yeah. If he showed up on Sunday and had not signed up, you would be like, I don't do that. I don't give people preference. Of course I'd put him up. Exactly. Uh, that's my point. <laughs> that's the kind of preference I'm talking about. Like when It's true. And then when good friend, like good friends who are very experienced no, they, comedians yeah, but come have, a little bit later. Because yeah. my, my cutoff is five forty five. If you're yeah, right I mean, if you're learning, you need to take take the the hits yeah. as it goes yeah. and learn, yeah. you know, to sign up, to respect the light, to move the mic stand, to like do all these little things mm-hmm. that you don't mm-hmm. learn. But yeah. if a great person comes through and they want a five minutes, I mean, oh, they got it, they got it. They take well, and the thing is, it's taking my stage time. So that's someone that I'd be like, oh yeah, take my stage yeah, time. Yeah, and someone yeah. that you watch, yeah. you learn from. You're like even, you know. Oh God, yeah. God, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the opener, I've been in contact with his opener because he wanted some spots, but it uh, didn't work out for him because he had Oh, well, they were at the wall plans. last night after for the for Kurush's show. Ah, good, good. Mm. Ah, so they did, okay. Um, but uh, after party comedy, so it's just a one-hour show and it's great, like the the pace. like So the like all the comedians that sign up, it's 30 minutes divided by all those comedians. Yeah. So it's it's great. So it great could be fun. two minute spots, or mm-hmm. it could be seven minute spots. Who knows? Exactly. That's lovely. I love that. I love it. I love it. Um, free so that's entry. That's one show you have. That's my Sundays. Then on Mondays, I run Pimp My Jokes. And where is that located? That's at Zeus Vargestan. Oh, nice. I like that spot. I love Zeus Vargestan. It's such a good room. And uh, that's every Monday. Um, I get f- like three other comedians, and we all do sets in the first half and then in the second half we sit down without microphones and uh develop new joke ideas yeah i've been meaning to go to that but on mondays i'm just so that's the one day a week that i do nothing it's often the day off for comedians so and that's and that's good um i wish but it is always on my radar that pimp pimp my jokes it's a super fun show, yeah. and um, we, you know, we riff off the ideas as a panel, and then we also get the audience to um, give ideas or uh, let us know if something's triggering, and we're just too, you know, desensitized to notice. Or yeah. um, and and the way we develop, yeah, it's it's a really loose, fun experiment. Yeah, like if it's triggering and cathartic, it works. But if it's just triggering and uh, yeah, yeah, I had a very interesting in- interesting show last week bringing up the topic of non-monogamy, and it triggered people. so so hard it was crazy because you're non-monogamous right yeah i guess i guess i guess i'll identify as that i'm i'm open to all discussions but monogamy doesn't doesn't make sense to me i'm non-monogamous but i'm not polyamorous Hmm. so how how would you yeah how do you how do you um uh, define uh polyamorous then in comparison polyamorous people have really strong relationships with every single one of their partners mm-hmm. and they have a lot of conversations about them and mm-hmm. every, there's just too much 
well, how do you feel? And how do you feel? Yeah, and how yeah, do you yeah. feel? And um, well, as a as a worker in the sex industry, I find that I don't really develop those relationships with everyone. Yeah. There is an exchange. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, bye bye. <laughs> Maybe see you next very time. Very healthy, very consensual, very mm -hmm. honest, but also like there's no need for all of the well, and it's also a different kind of mm, yeah. It's a very that's a very different context to do it in. But could you could you have two people that you're in love with that you? Um, I have a lot of love for multiple people, but yeah. do I want to have like the family life relationship with all of these people? No. Mm, interesting. Yeah. I think at one point my energy is very divided and it's just too much. Yeah. I'm open to all things. Uh, monogamy, however, is one thing that I think it's, it limits. I, I, don't, I don't understand a system where uh, you would want to limit the love someone that you love can experience. Yeah, I mean, as a bisexual person, I find mm. having to choose also a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. um, but they're very different love experiences and sexual mm. experiences. And who I want a relationship with is usually one person at a time, like a relationship where I'm like, let's plan a future yeah. without babies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, the boys that I date, they, they don't want babies. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I also don't plan futures anymore. I feel like future plan, I only plan for myself. And uh, there's a guy that I was seeing and um, I was talking about, ah, oh, I'm thinking of, you know, how I could integrate like living between Berlin and like Manchester, say. And he's like, oh, have you asked, like, have you talked about your main part, about that with your main partner? I'm like, you're like, why? I'm like, why would I know? <laughs> like, like, this is my plan. Like, I don't need to integrate their life and my life. It doesn't always work out like that. And we don't have to be so tightly holding on to, to a relationship. You know, like, if it works, it works, but don't limit your your experiences and what you I mean, want well, to do for you. Good luck with the babies because once you have that, you are definitely limiting your relationship to that child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It, like, I mean, it's I a different a concept, but it's the same. Like, you can't be like, oh, I'm going to move to Manchester. The kid's five years old. You got to plan the school, the education. The, the, blah, 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 blah. And what, yeah, and I think um, people that you're, um, like, relationships can, you know, like, love relationships and friendships can come and go, but anyone that's part of you, so anyone that's in your blood, like, those are the relationships that you... Yeah, that you have to move around with. That you hold on to no matter what. And you, you, you know, try and see them as often as you can. But, you know, with a kid, yeah, that's a very different, yeah, um, yeah a different responsibility. And conversation, yeah, <laughs> totally. You're going because mommy said you're going. Yeah. <laughs> and I love you. And I love you. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I think it's staying in Berlin. Um, for I'm, I'm planning to stay in Berlin and keep producing my shows here. Uh, Wait, we did all three of them? Uh, the, okay, so that's Pimp My Jokes on Mondays. And then Tuesdays is a Backdoor. Oh, so you're a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I'm Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're doing spots for other people. Exactly. That's great. You've got it down. I think it's actually, it just happened to be like that, but it works. So usually Wednesdays, I'll do a spot or I'll take a day off or Thursdays and then Fridays, Saturdays. And are you still recording that amazing podcast that I love so much? I am. I Yay. am still doing it. I was very rigid. Adults only. Adults only. Uh, Comedy Berlin. It's still going. I'm building my website right now because um, Facebook has really hurt me. Get off me. that bitch. Yeah, I'm off, I'm off um, but I'm needing to build a replacement um, channel. Oh, because so. you were doing everything only on Facebook? No, no. I was just also on Facebook. Um, so just event-wise and uh, marketing-wise. Uh, there was a lot of, yeah, it was, it was Facebook heavy, but I was still like, I was across all the things, but now I'm building a website to replace everything that Facebook was. Yeah. So and, now even and, my and events. And all these other things, I mean, cause your adults only is also very sexually oriented. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll eventually just ban you. Yeah. That's, that's, that might be what they've inadvertently done. Or a shadow ban. So you don't really see it or yeah. doesn't really post. It was more that they just, yeah, they like, I got hacked and then I got locked out of my account. And since I've, they've like Facebook has locked me out. They have tried to charge me um, thousands of euros. They are evil. And I don't know, like, it's not that I've been hacked, it's that it's locked. And so I've just lost all faith, trust, and uh, understanding of how I can get any support from this company that I've given thousands of euros to in advertising. You might need a lawyer. Um, they haven't charged me. Like, I managed to reject all these attempted things. But it's it's just all very... Mm, unprofessional and I don't want to I don't want to give any content to that platform so yeah. none of my events um, will be on they, Facebook aren't they all kind of all these platforms aren't they all connected like it's like meta they're all 
Uh, Instagram is the only one that I'll still use and find very important that's owned by Meta. But TikTok's Meta so, too or no? I don't touch Meta. I'm sorry, I don't touch TikTok. <laughs> I don't either, but... <laughs> no, I, I, I refuse to stay with TikTok. Um, you tried it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they were banning things that were um, sexual, sex education. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. So they banned, they banned um, videos that had the word, just for the word clitoris in it or orgasm. But then clips that had the word penis in it. Oh, no, they're good. Okay. Good to go. Yeah. So uh, just morally, I, I disconnected from TikTok back in 2020. Yeah. But yeah, but Facebook also, bleh, Instagram still seems to be okay somehow. Mm, no, it's going down. It's going down, but it's, a, it's still very important for comedians. And it's a really so used as a way to find comedy and, mm. and promote yourself. It's like a, a CV. So I'm still there, but my website, I'm really excited. It's like, I, I should be able to I'm launch looking, it next week. Is it going to be under your name or yeah. under adults only? Amazing. Yeah. I can't wait to see that too. <laughs> nah, yeah. thank you. Um, so my last question, and you're welcome to ask me any questions. I was just going to say backdoor comedy is my Tuesday uh-huh. show though. Yes. Backdoor comedy. Backdoor comedy. She's not a dirty slut this I one. Am backdoor such comedy. Such a dirty Pins slut. my jokes. Cream pie. <laughs> Curious. <laughs> Curious. After party comedy is chill, right? Then pin my jokes is chill. But yeah, backdoor comedy, um, cream pie, curious, trash people, and then raw dog stand up and dinner comedy at my sun- summer shows uh, and be on the pale. But in winter, it's just after party, pin my jokes, and uh, backdoor comedy and trash people once a month. That's great. What's, yeah. Where's trash people? I've never heard of this one. Uh, it's, a, it's the late show, uh, one Saturday a month at the Wall Comedy. Oh. Yeah, so it's um, it's a bucket split, so it's like showcase, but I let the comedians kind of do what they want. Uh, free entry, and the theme is just celebrating your worst self. Uh, comedy for your inner trash. I won't be there. <laughs> 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 whatever you should totally be. If you, I celebrate if you, my inner queen yeah. the end <laughs> I just think this we're all a bit bad so let's stop pretending like yeah, we're I'm not yeah I'm not pretending I'm good no, but I'm not no. celebrating my trash yeah I, I, I want to celebrate it, <laughs> I um but I really enjoy everything that you do I, I admire you a lot oh um, likewise Liliana yeah well, it's like queen work I love it slut queen but slut <laughs> the queen. best the slut best. queen is the best liberty oh my God. um and last question would be, what would you tell your younger self? All the, of all the things you've learned recently and like all these life changes. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I've seen you change in the past few years quite a bit. Although right. your outfits never change. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> You're like forever 80s aerobics <laughs> instructor like it doesn't matter where you're going great lipstick great eye makeup and the outfits is like oh she's been in berlin too long <laughs> why <laughs> i have been getting I've, I've, you don't see you see me on sundays right and and like now on on stage you haven't seen I've me seen you at, when like, you came showcases. to when i was bartending i I see you often. That's yeah, true. I do have it's a pretty very rare. You know? It's very rare. <laughs> There's variety, but it is, it's it's usually pretty 80s. You're right. Yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> that's probably keen on. Um so uh so what would I tell my younger self? <clears throat> I think uh I think like keep pursuing like like make time for your creativity i always did nice. but like make time for it and uh and then and then the other side to it is also um like say no oh i love this <laughs> say no uh when you when you like like practice saying no yeah it's a beautiful word it's a beautiful yeah. it's, it should be used as often as yes without any need for feelings outside of just like no exactly so no bitch no i mean <laughs> yeah no, like like no i don't want that or no fuck off like telling and just yeah, yeah. Not dealing with, I'm um, not trying to be nice to people that aren't being nice to you. Not yeah, I don't know. It's a big boundary, and it's a beautiful yeah. boundary, and it's. Uh, I I like that. I'm glad that that that. Well, you're incorporating it now, so that's amazing. Yeah. But yeah I also would have told my younger self at an earlier age, like, hey, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, be comfortable saying no. Like, don't have to take every opportunity. And you don't have to explain yourself when you say no. It's just a simple no. Yeah. Yeah. And people who make you make you explain yourself. Yeah. Like question that stuff oh uh, and there's so many more things i'd tell my younger self i'd give her a good like hour sit down and and also like just heaps of hugs just be like you're all right you're okay you're doing heaps you're doing of good hugs. yeah 
Do you do do you do any in a in a child work? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, that stuff's that stuff's powerful. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd done that a little bit earlier. I haven't done enough of it, but what I like, I do try and you know speak with her. And yeah, I have multiple inner childs. They're all different ages, depending on which one yeah. I need to talk to. And yeah. Yeah, for sure. They're all around. They're all around. <laughs> well, shut up, Cindy. <laughs> I wanted to ask: Are you doing? Um, are you doing work with uh, the dolma stuff? The we're talking about babies and stuff. The doula. The stuff. doula. Doula. I'm like dolma. Dolma is oh, like a transport service in Turkey. I'd say I haven't really moved further from my last experience, mm -hmm. and at some moment I might pick up again with somebody. But no, I'm still learning a lot. I'm very new, and it's something that takes a lot of tact and sensitivity and yeah. even with self yeah so there's a lot of learning there i am yeah. definitely hoping to support people in that and yeah. uh i do think death doulaing is more my style yeah yeah that's doulaing. super interesting i read I, I i didn't read about it that uh, implies that i've got some kind of uh, academic involvement, but no, there was a TV show that uh, had an episode where there was a death doula. Um, it was an Australian uh, stand-up comedy sitcom thing, and I'd never heard of it. Yeah, no, they've been around forever. That's so interesting. Yeah. That's such a cool thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do not know how to deal with grief. No. Well enough. No. That's unfortunate. Yeah. 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 But it's all a process, and, you know, I don't have children of my own, so I feel more comfortable on the death doula side, but... <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, you want a baby? Uh, yeah. Let me support you. Uh, how about we deal with your dying <laughs> relatives instead? Yeah. Or okay. miscarriages. There is also a big, um, in the training course that I did, a big subject on miscarriages and yep. supporting that. And it's a little bit easier in the sense of the longevity of time you spend with somebody and also how they don't want to see you afterwards. And it's understandable. And it's like, okay, I helped you through a rough time and we don't really have to talk again mm -hmm. versus a longer relationship or friendship if things go awry yeah. and you lose more so. yeah okay Oof. I like how we kept this really light yeah great <laughs> thanks so much thanks so much this is Anna Barrows everyone she's fucking fabulous check out her shows um, we're here at Slippery People at Wave.Studios every single s well whenever <laughs> 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 uh, we're trying to put them out consistently every Sunday uh, so check us out if you like what you see comment, like, check out one of these shows and we hope to see you around have a beautiful night I'm Liliana Velasquez, thank you thank, thank you. you Anna thank you Liliana I'm Anna Barros, thank you so much, <laughs> bye <laughs> are you fresh in Berlin or have you lived here for a while? both a year give or take I love yeah. your accent. So <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's the accent I want to be able to do. That's so good. It's like Victor Petrashkan's speed. I love it. What are you doing in Berlin? What do you do? Well, for about, I'm here for about one last summer. I've been here. I work as a cook in breakfast in Radisson Hotel. In Radisson Hotel? Yeah, the one in nice. Alexanderplatz, uh, there were the big fish tank blew up. <laughs> it was the, the aquarium blew up, right? Uh, yeah. Sure did. Yeah. Blow up. No more. <laughs> no more. <laughs> now, now I'm just staying at home doing nothing and they pay me money. That's so good. <laughs> um, was, 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 <laughs> you're living the, the Balkan dream. Uh, <laughs>